Hello everyone and welcome to ICIMWS 2024. ICIMWS is an event that aspires to improve the general awareness of various mental health related aspects with a focus on skill building and knowledge enhancement. It is an initiative by the students and practitioners of counseling and family therapy to spread awareness on mental health topics. As part of this 3 week event awareness campaigns are being run on several different topics skill development workshops are being conducted for students and practitioners and webinars and panel discussions are being planned Before we move on with today's agenda a word of thanks for the organizations supporting this initiative Manvai Wellness Mannat Psychotech Services and Navodaya Kranti In our inaugural webinar last week we covered the following topics supporting my team the impact of peer pressure on body image what keeps you up at night substance use disorder the power of forgiveness how to promote family values in a changing society why marriages are in trouble and small steps to relationship happiness If you are interested in uh, any of these sessions uh, the video is available the link is there in uh, the group uh, in the description of this uh, video uh, the session so you can see it there Today we will have sessions on the following topics mindfulness in the classroom building stronger relationships empowering children with disability and toba ye tambaku With this let's move on to the first session of the day Greetings to one and all. Today, the topic I have preferred to put some light upon is mindfulness in the classroom, fostering mental wellness in education. As simple the wordings of this topic are, it is equally simple to understand it, yet is equally difficult to implement it. We all have experienced the school life. All of us will be having different experiences of the same. When one is kept inside the classroom and in the other situation when a person the same person is kept outside the classroom. Both the situations are different and the person can also be analyzed on different parameters. when outside the classroom the subjects to be studied or the areas of life to be covered are completely different and when you come to the classroom things are really different you have to be focused you have to be concentric you are also required to be more particular in the moment and we know how difficult it is to be in the moment but maybe not always but yes most of the times it is so taking this forward next i'll display a picture here determining in the context in what i'm talking we can see two people here left and right and the cloud of thoughts for both the people are different the one on the right and the one on the left one on the left can easily be recognized because we all are in the same state these days one on the right is where we want to be as we talk about the three basic components body mind and soul when all the three are present at the same instance with better clarity in life it gets very easy for each one of us to make further decisions for the plans and even betterly said ideating a better life so teaching something from the very basics of learning stages of a human this would really help us to develop into better futuristic human 
The absolute protagonist of my presentation is mindfulness. So come, let's see what mindfulness actually is. We have talked a lot about it till now, but to be more clear, as the screen shows you, focusing on one moment, task or thought at a time. Basically, being present in the present. It's rightly said, be where you are, otherwise you will miss your life. It's a very small line, but it means a lot. This is what mindfulness actually is, being in the moment and enjoying it to the fullest. Okay, so now let's bring a little more practicality to the session. Now we will do a 15 or 20 second task. I would request you all to close your eyes, take a deep mindful inhale, slowly exhale, open your eyes. A lot of you might not know this, but yes, you have done a really pleasant thing for your body, mind and soul just now. Though it was a very small breath process, still what you have done is you have evoked your vagus nerve. Vagus nerve, what is it? Any ideas? Okay, let's discuss a little about this term as well because this is also connected to today's topic. Vagus nerve is one of the longest and the most complex nerve in our body. It runs from the brain through the face and thorax to the abdomen. And that is how it has the power to control our digestion, heart rate, voice, mood and even the immune system. So aren't these things very very important to us? If you look at the words again, it's Digestion, heart rate, voice, mood and the immune system. Yes, of course, we can relate to them very easily. And that is why a regular stimulation of the vagus nerve is required to keep, to keep our mind and heart into synchronization. A kind of peace where we are, apologies, a kind of synchronization between our mind and heart which keeps us at peace for maximum time of the day. Isn't it interesting to know that how the anatomy of our body is so very connected with such a soulful terminology of mindfulness? This excites me and makes me more curious to know about this term. Yet, definitely I'm expecting that a lot of people out there who are listening to this are also interested in doing the same. Well, in case you want to know more about vagus nerve or anything relevant to that, definitely there are a lot of resources available and please, please do check. Now, I will be moving to our main topic that is mindfulness in classroom. Classroom as in the classrooms in the school or in this just the study environment, the environment of learning where a lot of attention and focus is required. When we talk about the setup of a classroom, there are two major components of it, the teacher and the students. The teacher is the one who guides and students are the one who follow. There is nothing more remarkable when a set of souls connect with each other under the shade of mindfulness. As we expect both the teacher as well as the students to inculcate mindfulness in classroom, now let's see further how and why the teachers can do so and on the other side the students as well. First we will talk about teachers. Why 
mindfulness is needed in classroom when the teachers in the classroom are mindful about their actions and words they definitely have a choice and they will put out what is positive and productive which eventually will lead to an environment which becomes very accepting this environment creation can only be done by emotionally strong people and mindfulness brings it along also creating a mindful environment helps the teacher in managing the difficult students difficult students as in see we all are humans we all are different so in every situation we react or respond differently i will definitely respond or react in a situation little different from what any one of you would and that is what makes us all humans we are just different in different aspects and sometimes when that different is something that doesn't match my mental level or the teacher's mental level it becomes a little difficult for the person to handle but yes being mindful about the words and the environment and a lot of other factors it helps a lot for the next point if a teacher is very dissolving let's say that he or she the teacher understands the things that the students are conveying to her and she takes them in a positive manner is always accepting is always there to listen is always mindful about her actions and words so yes this helps the students to connect with the teacher more and it strengthens the teacher student relationship since the bonds are strong now it also helps in building the community next we would see how teachers can inculcate mindfulness in themselves and further enhance the classroom environment into a very subtle and complacent one a wise man once said be the change you want to see in the world so if you want to bring a change you have to start with yourself it all starts within how you bring the change how you bring the good change in fact that you want to see you have to start everything from yourself because when you work on yourself whether it is mentally or physically it definitely impacts your impression that is present on the students how they see you how they take you how do they really respect you how much can they bind with you everything how acceptable you are for them and while doing this when you are working on yourself to bring the change you should also always consider sharing the benefits of whatever you are doing children learn better when they see things happening so rather than putting your you know advices into words telling them do this do that do it with your own self and when you bring that change in the aura or the decorum of your class it automatically goes into the vibrations now when working with the students always use age appropriate activities the activities with which the students of the particular class or age can connect something that makes them feel curious to know more about what you really want them to know make sure that both of you the teacher and the student go aligned on the same path and please do not leave anyone behind because a classroom is a place where we have a complete diversity no student is same as no human is same so no student is same every student is different every student's needs are different how they understand things how they tackle a situation how do they respond everything is different for everyone so yes please have regards for the diversity and try your best or just put your best in including each and every one 
make sure that you're able to make them connect with each other as well not only with your own self but with each other in themselves as well and lastly make sure that you knit mindfulness into the curriculum there are ample of mindfulness exercises and activities present so you can pick any of them and keep rehearsing them make sure that you are sharing the needful words with the students so that they can connect with you even more if not how you know it do it the way the students will grab it so now as we are done talking about the teachers how and why they should go with mindfulness let's move to the part of students here we proceed with why mindfulness is needed in the classroom going with the first pointer which says mindfulness helps the students in developing self awareness now what is self awareness self awareness as a human or as a child if i talk about it it is basically to know my inner self to know how capable i am of doing things what all things can i do what are the things that i like i do not like what caliber do i hold knowing my potential basically your self introspection in a manner so that is self awareness which is super important to go further in life and decide when to do what to do how to do and when you develop the sense of self awareness you are surely there able to have a good self control as well self control means basically to have the right choice of doing anything saying anything or just putting out anything to anyone making sure that no other soul no other person gets hurt it is when you know the limit the boundary of everything subsequently when you do things under control that is within the limits and the boundaries anyhow the sense of calmness also develops and when you are calm you can cope up with situations really really well you will be efficient enough to respond to situations our next point to here says helps manage emotions emotional management is a very important task i hope everyone agrees with this we have a number of emotions and to manage these emotions is the real task and as a student it gets even difficult because when you are learning when you are into your developing phase things are not that sorted you are always curious you have so many questions in your mind to which you are searching answers for so yes having a control over these emotions is a real challenge and mindfulness actually helps you in deciding the right path now if you look at the image here which is a very beautiful self explanatory image you are here this tag in the brain completely clarifies it all as with the pointer i go next it increases your focus and attention when you make sure that you are present at the moment in the present time with present set of thoughts absolutely you will be focused and attentive and that is all we majorly need inside the classroom lastly it says it promotes self acceptance as we all humans are created maybe in the same manner but with different qualities and different you know abilities we all are different so accepting one's own self is the first thing to have a peaceful life no comparison no competition it is your own journey so accepting who you are 
and working on your own self to make your own self better with every passing day is what self acceptance is all about moving forward under the section of students let us have an overview of the psychological and physical benefits of mindfulness we all know that a student's life is not that straight as it looks like it has its own ups and downs now dealing with these ups and downs is where we need the coping skills and mindfulness helps a student to develop these it also helps in improving the learning ability and memory as it's important to you know retain the knowledge that you gain because you learn it and then you forget it doesn't make any sense so yes when you have clarity in your mind you know what you are taking inside your brain then yes you will put the filter and you will take it inside and you will shut it shut it in the sense that you will have it retained in your mind so that you can implement it whenever needed as the students are coping with the ups and downs we recently discussed and similar is the management of problems next it sees a very strong self esteem what is self esteem self esteem is basically defined as the confidence in one's own worth abilities or morals it is an overall opinion of yourself and your beliefs about your abilities and limitations so when it has so much to deal with your own self then yes mindfulness mindfulness and mindfulness and yes that smile that you have just catered is what is happiness and it keeps on growing when we put ourselves under mindfulness provides better sleep yes sleep sleeping is one of the best solution to a lot of problems not always but yes almost many a times because a better sleep will make your brain relaxed it will give it the me time that it requires to rejuvenate the energy and come back start a new day with the required purity and this purity of mind takes us to better thoughts and better thoughts help us live a better life so these were the psychological and physical benefits that one can gain under mindfulness so now taking you all further i would like to share a small activity or you can say a hack that would help you gain mindfulness in a very interesting manner it is named as mindfulness snack and it's a method so i'll be discussing with you how we can do it sharing this method with all of you actually makes me feel that even if this method helps any one of you or you know at least maybe just one of you at some point in life it will definitely put a great impact soulfully now let's discuss this method this method is basically to be followed on the days when we feel stressed out there are surely days when we feel very much consumed and we don't feel like doing anything and we are so stressed out we feel like we are into a box out of which we want to come out but we are not able to we are like packed and we are wired you know and we are not able to open ourselves so that is the point where you have to follow this mindfulness snack following this acronym here s stands for stop so whatever you are doing whatever moment you are into just stop pause for that moment and now when you have paused make your mind a little relaxed calm it down 
Second, N, you have to notice. What you have to notice? What is happening within you and what is happening around you? Look around and look into your inner self. Next, E, which stands for acceptance. Please do not ever trick yourself. Whatever is happening within you, around you, whatever you feel, please accept it. Acknowledge it for your own betterment. Do not try to fabricate anything because we are very much clear about the realities. So do not judge, do not compare. Simply accept what is happening. Next is C, that is curious. When you have accepted and acknowledged about what is happening, you will definitely have questions about your experience, your environment, your feelings, what you want to do at that point of time, what are you feeling, do you, really, do you want to go somewhere, do you want to meet someone, do you feel like talking to someone, are you feeling you know, a rush of anger or what is it? It can be anything, if you have so many emotions, so many feelings, it can be anything, but you have to be curious about it, you have to have that you know, thirst of knowing that what is happening in why is it happening? Right. What can I do to make it better? You have to have that in you. And as humans, we are designed to learn and experience and explore. So yes, each one of us has that capability. It is not like one can do it and the other cannot. It might take all of us different level of efforts. But yes, we can do it. And lastly, we have K that stands for kindness. Why kindness is needed? It is needed especially when you are responding to yourself and others. Not only with respect to mistakes that are made, but yes, in all aspects. Kindness is needed as a response to all the negative emotions because that is how you neutralize things always serve kindness on the table always and this is how an emotionally strong person is recognized do not ever panic when you have days of stress when you don't feel like doing anything when you are when you slow down it's very okay it's absolutely okay just keep moving your speed doesn't matter but your motion should always be there and this method of mindfulness snack it really helps you a lot so stop notice accept get curious and present kindness so with this, I end my presentation. Thank you to all of you. And to read more about this topic and other topics of this similar context, please visit the blog section as it's given on the screen. Thank you so much. Indian culture holds a significant place for social relations. Familial bonds are deeply rooted in our society, so much so that we not only believe in, but practice in the ancient adage, Vasudheva Kutumbakam, that is, the whole world is a family. These connections form the foundation of our social fabric. While familial relationships can have a profoundly positive impact on personal growth 
and overall well-being, it is essential to recognize their potential influence on our psychological and emotional well-being as well. Hello everyone, I am Tushita Srivastav and I welcome you to this webinar on building stronger relationships, dealing with marital issues. Before we delve further, let's acknowledge that every relationship faces challenges from communication breakdowns to trust issues, conflicts over finances uh, to differences in parenting styles. These issues are common in many marriages and families. And if you or anyone you know may be facing them, you should know that you are not the only one and it is all right to talk about it. Also, it is essential to recognize that these challenges are opportunities for growth and positive change. How does one's culture influence their marital dynamics and family harmony? Well, the cultural background, family values and traditions play a significant role in shaping marital dynamics and family relationships. From communication styles to gender roles to conflict resolution strategies, cultural influences impact how we interact with our partners and family members. By understanding and respecting cultural differences, we can create harmonious and inclusive family environments that celebrate diversity. Let us understand the role of communication breakdowns and trust. Effective communication. Effective communication is the cornerstone of healthy relationships. When communication breaks down, misunderstandings may arise, leading to conflicts and emotional distress. By understanding the role of communication breakdowns in relationship challenges, we can learn strategies to improve communication and strengthen our connections with our loved ones. Coming on to the significance of trust, as effective communication, similarly, trust is the foundation of any healthy relationship. I would like you to take a moment here and think. Think of any relationship any familial relationship in your life with trust, where trust is present. I want you to think about how does it make you feel when you think of the person, when you think of the connection you share with the person, how does it make you feel? You may type in your answers through the comment section that I can go through. When there is trust, we feel secure. We feel supported. When there's trust, we feel loved. And when there's trust, we feel understood by our partners and family members. However, trust can be fragile. And breaches of trust can lead to significant conflicts and emotional turmoil. By rebuilding trust and fostering a sense of security through open communication, we can resolve conflicts and strengthen our bonds with our loved ones. Effective conflict resolution strategies for blended families. Speaking for India, we mostly observe two major types of family which is the joint or the extended family system and the nuclear family system. Recent trends and studies have shown there has been a shift towards the traditional joint family system to a nuclear family system. And such blended or extended families that we have had since ages face unique challenges as they navigate the complexities of integrating different family dynamics 
and relationships. Our society has been moving from a collectivist culture to an individualist culture. From managing conflicts between parents and law and uh, children to balancing loyalty and familial duties, such challenges require effective conflict resolution strategies. By fostering empathy and understanding within this blended family culture, we can create harmonious and supportive environments for all family members. Coming on to the first point, that is open communication and making a safe space. Encouraging open and honest communication within the blended family helps like a charm. Creating a safe space where family members feel comfortable expressing their thoughts, feelings, emotions and concerns without the fear of judgment is an effective way of conflict resolution. You may remember Mr. Mohanjit's session last week where we concluded how effective open communication is the real secret ingredient to any healthy relationship. Coming on to the second point, that is active listening. Practicing active listening skills ensures that each family member feels heard and understood. Similarly, family members should be encouraged to listen attentively to each other's perspectives before responding and avoid interrupting or dismissing their concerns. Coming on to the third point, that is adjustment and flexibility. Promoting adjustment and flexibility when resolving conflicts is an important point. Encouraging family members to find mutually beneficial solutions that take into account everyone's needs and preferences. Let's discuss the point number three a little bit more. When we talk about adjustment and flexibility, a question arises, must we compromise? A lot of people in our lives, you must have noted it, uh, they point out that compromising is necessary for marital well-being. However, it is imperative to acknowledge that compromise does not imply putting oneself down at every instance. Rather, it fosters a collaborative approach where both parties contribute to finding solutions that honor each other's perspectives and preferences. It involves a willingness to meet halfway, resulting in outcomes that reflect the shared values and goals of the relationship. Maintaining individual identities in committed relationships. Okay, so in any committed relationship, it is essential to maintain a sense of individual identity and autonomy. While shared goals and experiences are essential for building intimacy and connection, preserving our individuality allows us to pursue personal interests, goals, and passions. By supporting each other's personal growth and self-expression, we can enhance our relationships and foster a sense of fulfillment and well-being. Encouraging the other partner to pursue their interests, hobbies and goals independently helps in maintaining individual identities within a relationship. Supporting each other's personal growth and self-expression and celebrating each other's achievements and, successful, uh, and successes. This also includes how people uh, respect each other's autonomy and independence within the relationship and how this is equally important. Balancing time together and apart. Find a balance between spending quality time together as a couple and maintaining separate interests and activities. Allow each other to space and uh, the space and freedom to pursue their individual passions and interests. Establishing and 
sustaining healthy relationship boundaries so now that we've talked about individual identities we should know that healthy boundaries are essential for creating a sense of safety and security and maintaining mutual respect for autonomy within the relationships let's see how we can work on it when we talk about establishing and sustaining healthy relationship boundaries the very first point that we should take into account is defining personal boundaries now how should you do it take the time to identify your personal boundaries and communicate them clearly to your partner discuss what behaviors are acceptable and unacceptable to you within the relationship and establish mutual respect for each other's boundaries secondly setting limits you should set limits on how much time and energy you want to devote to the relationship versus other aspects of your life such as work hobbies your friendships any leisure activities and ensure that the relationship does not overshadow the other important areas of your life coming on to the third point that is regularly reassessing be open to renegotiating boundaries with your partner to ensure that they continue to serve both of your best interests regularly reassess and adjust your boundaries as needed based on changes in your relationship dynamics and individual needs coming on to the importance of seeking help for marital and family issues one should know that seeking help is a sign of strength and courage and not of weakness when faced with marital or family issues if one feels that the individual efforts may not be working well and uh, there is stress in the life and they may be facing challenges in their relationships that they are unable to work on together then it is essential to reach out to qualified professionals for support and guidance from couples therapy or family counseling or individual therapy some of these interventions can provide valuable insights and strategies for resolving conflicts improving communication and strengthening relationships finally do not forget the you in the us it is essential to prioritize self care during relationship challenges from practicing mindfulness and relaxation techniques to engaging in hobbies and activities that brings you joy self care is essential for maintaining emotional well being and resilience by taking care of ourselves we can better support our partners and family members through difficult times and cultivate healthier and more fulfilling relationships thank you everyone i hope this webinar would have given you some thoughts and insights and i would personally recommend you to visit the session number 1 which was held last week for better insight and knowledge Thank you so much. Today I want to talk about empowering children with disability through education. First, let us understand the definition of persons with disability. Rights for Persons with Disability Act 
defines persons with disability as a person with long term physical mental intellectual and sensory impairment which in interaction with barriers hinders his full and effective participation in society equally with others i want to further define the term barrier which i highlighted in the earlier definition according to rights for persons with disability act 2016 barrier means any factor including communicational environmental attitudinal or structural factors which hampers full and effective participation of persons with disability in the society what can parents do when they know that the child is born with an impairment or realize the impairment 2 3 years after the child is born first step is early intervention what is early intervention 0 to 6 years of age is the most crucial phase where the brain of the child is developing so to prevent or reduce the impact of any impairment early intervention facilities should be utilized at the earliest these services have multi sensorial stimulation approach early intervention centers have all professionals that the child require for holistic development cognitive development speech and communication and language development physical and social emotional development where can we find early intervention centers ngos provide early intervention facilities private centers are also available and recently government has also opened up 32 early intervention centers all across india second step is school admission which is one of the major milestone in a child's life no child with or without disability can be denied admission in school according to rights for persons with disability act 2016 and right to education act 2009 even after the act in place parents struggle with children school admission and retaining them i want to share that no government school can deny admission for of children with disability and private schools are also supposed to have children in their school have you ever thought why school admission and retaining children with disability in school is tough it is because of the barriers that exist in our society i will talk to you about two barriers in detail i will talk to you about few physical barrier first the road are not well constructed and a child using wheelchair can't use the road to reach the school another example child drops out of the school because he or she is not able to use the washroom the washroom is not accessible there are stairs in front of the washroom or the doors of the washroom is narrow and the child using wheelchair can't enter the washroom if ramps were made and doors were made wider the child would not have to drop out of the school one more example the child's class is in second or the third floor there is no lift in the school if the child's class was shifted to the ground floor the child could have studied now i will talk about attitude barrier we do not want to make some such small physical changes in the school our attitude can be why make such changes for a handful of children but we don't realize that these changes might be helpful for other children too another example of an attitude barrier can be i can't teach these children i don't know how to teach them we stop making effort to enhance our own skills small changes in the way we teach like using multi sensorial approach which is teaching children where all their senses are active visual auditory 
kinesthetic and tactile. If we use this approach, all the children will benefit because each child have their own learning style. Lastly, what can we do to ensure education and empowerment of children with disability? First can be have knowledge of laws, acts, policies, schemes and facilities available for children with disability. Second, equip with this knowledge. Let's remove barriers that exist in our environment and within us. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Chandra. Today I am presenting a webinar on the topic Tauba Ye Tambaku. So, you know how to make Ye Tambaku Tauba kaise bana? And what is addiction and how it is one of the leading cause of eviction of tobacco users from the family as well as society. So, what addiction to eviction means when a person is so much addicted to tobacco use up to such an extent that a person starts feeling excluded from the family as well as society. So it is very important to take this issue seriously. Now moving on to the objectives of today's webinar. So first I will be highlighting some facts related to tobacco use. Second, harmful effects of tobacco. Third, benefits of quitting tobacco. Fourth, about some ways through which a person can quit tobacco. Fifth, what are the withdrawal symptoms a person face in a journey of quitting tobacco and how to manage it? Sixth, about the relapse prevention. So, beginning with the introduction, I would like to talk about addiction. So, what tobacco addiction is? that a person starts feeling a strong need on or urge to use tobacco products in such an extent that it starts interfering day-to-day -day life of the user. And most importantly, as per the recent evidences, it is seen that the major problem is that tobacco is killing half of its users. However, every problem comes with a solution. So, the solution to this problem is to quit it. Because the tobacco use is the leading cause of preventable deaths all over the world. Which means, by quitting tobacco use, further death can be prevented. And the situation in our country is alarming because in our country, as per the recent reports, it is seen that India is at the second position in terms of the tobacco users. Therefore, it is better to take a step forward and quit tobacco products. So, say no to tobacco. Say no to tobacco. To discuss this issue in a better way, I would like to highlight some harmful effects of tobacco. So tobacco not only affects the physical health of a person, but it affects the health and mental well-being of the family members and society as well. And to elaborate this issue, next I will talk about the harmful effects of tobacco. So the tobacco not only affects the health of a person but it also affects day-to-day -day activities. First of all, the harmful effects of tobacco on personal health. It mainly affects looks of a person like everything stings and the person can have bad breath, yellow teeth, wrinkles on skin and there can also be the signs of early aging. And it affects the overall looks of a person. 
now there can be also some major issues like oral issues including oral cancer heart issues respiratory issues including lung cancer and most importantly there is a feeling of guilt and re and rejection from family members which affects the health of the user second the harmful effects of tobacco on family are the second hand smoking affect the health of the family members and it also cause feeling of frustration anxiety and this all lead to the disturbance of mental health of the family members now the harmful effects of tobacco on society is that when a person use this tobacco products there is a release of chemicals in the environment and society doesn't accept these kind of people and this leads to the rejection of the user from the society and the user feels excluded from the society now after having so much information related to harmful effects of tobacco let's talk about the benefit of quitting tobacco so similarly the benefits of quitting tobacco of it not only benefits the personal health but it also it is also beneficial for the health of the family members and society first of all the benefits of quitting tobacco on personal health are that all the harmful effects of tobacco that we have discussed in previous slides they all are reduced from the moment a person things in mind of quitting tobacco so it is very important to think once that this tobacco is not only harming my health but also the health of family members and society as well and making a decision and sticking on the decision of quitting tobacco is necessary secondly it is also expensive so to keep in mind the pocket of a person and to save money decide and quit tobacco now the benefits of quitting tobacco on on family members is that there will be no second hand smoking and this will save the health of the near and dear ones now benefits of quitting tobacco on environment are that without these tobacco there will be no chemical release in the environment and the environment will be clean and healthy now when a person when a person starts this journey of de addiction there are various challenges which are faced by the person and one of the major challenge is withdrawal symptoms <laughs> as a person stops tobacco use all the chemical of the tobacco they are reduced in the blood level and because of this these withdrawal symptoms are and they are really very distressing and it affects the motivation level of the user also so it is very important to keep in mind that these withdrawal symptoms will occur and be prepared for the for handling them so first withdrawal symptom is they can be depressed mood insomnia third irritability fourth frustration fifth anger sixth anxiety seventh craving and difficulty in concentration seventh restlessness and decreased heart rate and how to manage them the management is quite easy we just need to make some changes in our day to day life and distract our mind to focus on the main aim that our aim is to quit it and i can do it i can do it just keep repeating in your mind yes i can do it i can do it and you will find yourself at a 
better place so the first first symptoms like depressed mood insomnia irritability frustration they can be treated by deviating your mind by talking to someone near and dear one and by reading a book maybe or doing things that you like following your hobbies your interests so these all things can be prevented and when a person feels feels craving and difficulty in concentration just relax meditate read your favorite book for changing or or some distraction for restlessness or decreased heart rates de decreased heart rate these symptoms require medical management and you can report your nearby facility to manage them there can be a issue of increased appetite or weight gain also so just monitor your dietary pattern include fresh fruits vegetables fiber in your diet and drink plenty of water so after these withdrawal symptoms a person there can be a there can be a person who is managing who is able to manage these withdrawal symptom as well but a point cup comes when relapse occurs so what is relapse so relapse is even after taking so much care relapse occurs and relapse is when a person suddenly start using tobacco again after a period of no use and if relapse occurs it is very important that this should not be seen as a failure but it should be considered as a learning experience and as a part of quitting process next i would like to tell you how relapse can be prevented so relapse prevention is all about knowing all the triggers which are causing the relapse and preventing them first trigger can be boredom to prevent boredom you can just plan a trip go to your favorite place explore things and discuss about your feeling with your friends spouse or some near and dear ones second trigger can be social pressure so there are situations when you are when a person is so addicted to a substance and there are also friends who are also indulged in the use of the same product and they offer you again and you are you have quitted the use of that product and when someone is offering you it's sometimes it becomes difficult for saying no but keep in mind for your health you need to learn to say no just refuse it if you don't want it just refuse it don't feel the social pressure of using the product just discuss about this issue with your family ventilate yourself third trigger can be negative emotional states during this process of tobacco cessation there can be negative feelings also like you can feel depressed dull it's normal just talk to your friends ventilate yourself and if nothing works just seek professional help now summary today we talked about tobacco use harmful effects of tobacco benefits of quitting tobacco ways to quit tobacco use various withdrawal symptoms which can occur when a person is in in a period of withdrawal and how to manage them and lastly about the relapse prevention lastly i would like to conclude by saying that the journey from addiction doesn't not only goes to eviction there is a second option of quitting it just go on that path decide and make up a plan there can be failure also withdrawal symptoms also relapse also 
but if you are you have set your goal and there is support available there are your friends family members and society just keep in mind all of them talk to others ventilate yourself and make a decision and stick to your decision you will really have a better and healthy life i would like to conclude by saying that perseverance is a key to success just keep on trying these are the references that i have used thank you everyone for listening to my webinar so now that we are done with the sessions for the day uh, it is time for a q and a session you may type whatever questions you have in the comment window below and the speakers will try to answer them also uh, please fill the feedback form below to let us know what you think about the sessions thank you